வெரி மச் privilege to be the part of this celebrations and today we have a renowned soil scientist madam mausumi rai choudhury the principal scientist is with us so i wholeheartedly welcome you all for this webinar and uh, now let me welcome our principal to introduce about madam sir please uh thank you hemalada uh, dear participants respected madam the guest speaker today and the organizer hemalada and uh, my dear staff members uh, today is a very important day as far as agriculture is concerned as we are aware uh, soil is a very important resource and uh, to give the significance about the soil health and soil sustainability and every december 5th uh, internationally we are celebrating the uh, soil day to make an awareness among the students community and other stakeholders agriculturists to give the importance for this uh, soil in uh, playing a vital role in productivity of these uh, uh, different crops also uh, kumaravur institute of agriculture is one of the uh, leading institutes uh, we are uh, privileged to have or pride to have this, uh, this world soil day today and the, this world soil day to take the history of this world soil day uh, normally it was started by this uh, in december 2017 and it was taken a decision by un general assembly the first soil day was started celebration in december 5th 2014 that was the first official soil day and to mark this birthday celebrations of this one of the kings thailand who has officially sanctioned this event also every year we are goes on celebrating from 14th onwards and on different themes and now the world soil day 2020 is mainly keep soil alive and protect the biodiversity it's very important aspect you must soil is a living thing and you must keep the soil alive and protect the all the living organisms of this soil in a healthy ecosystem that is very much important uh, this uh, thing and uh, to address this team to our students and our staff members and we selected our one of the guest speaker from the national leading institute that is indian institute of water management from bhubaneswar which is one of the lead center in the uh, india for doing this water related aspect and also uh, in irrigation aspect also i would like to introduce one of my um, uh, friends dr moshmi rai chaudhary who is the principal scientist of soil science working in indian institute of water management bhubaneswar and he um, is a leading soil scientist uh, mainly working on this uh, wastewater management and he is also re- received several awards and worked in these uh, various um, institution also he has got rich experience working in government of india and soil survey organizations and uh, handling many uh, dst projects and externally funded project also he was also awarded as a fellow of indian society of soil science and he is a renowned soil scientist in this water sector also so we requested the madam to give the guest lecture on this event of the soil day to about the theme also uh, madam has readily agreed to deliver the lecture to the our students community and also to our staff members so with this few introduction I uh, may request our uh, guest speaker, Madam Dr. Moushmi Chaudhary, uh, to make an elaborate presentation on this uh, theme on well soil. Madam, uh, thank, thank you, you Dr. Pandian. Uh, it is my privilege uh, to address uh, this session. And at the same time, I, will, I thank you for giving me this opportunity and inviting me to this lecture. So I would like to share the... Uh, presentation now
Uh, how to share it? Whether you have to give it something, just hold on. Hey, madam. Madam, uh, madam, uh, in bottom you can uh, see the share screen option, madam. Share screen option, madam. Uh, Some yes, green yes, color highlight. Yeah. Ah, uh, yes, and then my PowerPoint, which is open. Yeah, which is open now, madam. That it is not it showing now. It is not displaying. But uh, it has come Microsoft PowerPoint, not the uh, slides. Shall I click this one? My presentation is open. You go to the bottom, madam. Share option. Uh, share screen option, the bottom of the screen, ma'am. Ah yes, yes, I have seen it. Ah, uh, here That's I have to give share. Share allow Zoom to share your screen. Ah yes. And after that, you click the uh, screen tab or lab screen. Ah, uh, where the uh, presentation is open. It is coming security and privacy, something like that. I will go to general. No, ma'am. It's actually open to all the panels. Is uh, my slides are not visible, right? Yeah. Yes, yes, ma'am. Is it visible? No. 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 No, ma'am. Not to share there. Share. I have to go to share. Now they are saying open system preferences. What is this open system preferences? Whether it has come now? No, no. No, madam. My um, uh, again, I'm going here. Yes. Here, share yes. screen. Then I'm going to here Microsoft present. Hold shift to select multiple windows. No. Then share. Allow Zoom to share your screen. Open system references to grant access. Okay. So I have to go to here and where I have to give access. There it is. Can I guide you? Ah yes, yes, please. Um, uh, initially, you open the presentation and minimize the. Lord, Lord, pass. No, please. Ah yes. Presentation, no, and after that you minimize ah. that. Ah, open the presentation and then. And minimize, minimize that, ma'am. Ah yes, open the presentation. I have. It is open only. Yes, ma'am, and minimize your presentation, ma'am. <coughs> I have to minimize it. Minimize yes, the presentation. Hmm. Yes. Then. So after that, you uh, you click the share share screen option in the bottom of the screen in Zoom. Share screen. Yes. Then. Yes. Yes. yes but it is not showing the uh, presentation here. Uh, please guide my son. Yes. Hello. Yes, sir. Sir, yeah, actually. Uh, Open the your presentation in Sile and minimize your presentation. Sir. Uh, so sorry. after that, and click the share screen option. Uh, yes, sir. So we have opened the presentation. Yes, minimize minimize it, sir. Minimize it. Okay, sir. Yes, sir. Then share screen. Now you can see the you know, small tab in bottom of the screen, sir. Yes, sir. And and now you can see the presentation small box in that screen. Uh, sir, actually the presentation is at one side of the screen, but not inside the Zoom. Else, Netaji, madam can send the presentation to us. We can share it. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Allow Zoom. 
এখানে করি যে বিচার পাঁচটা করছি এখানে আছে না box. Yes. Uh, Netaji webinar at ka.ac.in, am I right? Okay. Netaji, no, no, Netaji has given a email. Yes, yes, sir. 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 Sir, did you receive the mail ID? Yes, ma'am. Uh, we webinar have received. At... Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. Are you sending, madam? Yes, yes, sir. We are sending it, sir. Actually, it is my son's device. So, I'm an Apple. 
you know it is i'm uh, totally you should be so happy but always i my also morning i defined difficult then i asked to get him another to send it to redmi phone apple sometimes uh, yes and i am not uh, well conversant with this system and he is also not doing much with zoom so he is it is asking so much privacy this that so many thing i hope now it will be fine but i am really very sorry i could not start in time no problem how is your health madam now now it's fine i am tomorrow going to bellur and some okay. communications have uh, initiated so we will be checking up there mm. so it will be fine let's we have okay. to deal with this <laughs> well thank you for inviting me i will get an opportunity to share my experiences with the students that is a very big thing for me and how were you how is your health i'm fine but everything is all right i joined in this institute one or two months back na yeah, yes so uh, i heard that you only told me so it is a very nice thing and you will be whatever experiences you gain during your uh, service time definitely you will be um, this taking this university to new height <clears throat> thank you yes and we have worked together in so many other uh, <laughs> forum also so i know you better so I, now it is visible right ah uh, yes madam you can start now madesh okay hema nada hema yes sir we can start now okay thank you hemlata uh. <laughs> for helping me out from this problem so thank you so much so i will like to start uh, my deliberation <clears throat> actually initially i will like to say ki uh, soil is one of the major life support system for all living beings for all of us and especially for the plants on the earth and uh, you can go to the next uh, slide <clears throat> our this year theme is keep soil alive and uh, protect the biodiversity so i will like me to say ki here i will be uh, stressing on soil microbial biodiversity because microbial organisms are the part that is keeping our soil alive so if you see <clears throat> for any living beings what are the environmental factors are essential for to live on to to have a very beautiful life and these factors are light mechanical support heat air water and nutrients so if you see <clears throat> that soil it provides mechanical support to stand on then heat to maintain environmental temperature air to provide oxygen water for moisture and nutrients for food all these essential factors are driven by soil other than light soils can supply all these nutrients so when we think when you will feel the soil is not healthy a healthy soil if when the soil is not able to deliver any of this any one of this so if it is not going to deliver mechanical support that means the soil is not healthy if it is not going to deliver enough water air nutrients that means the soil is not healthy so <clears throat> whatever uh, factors are de uh, we uh, depend on that is plants depend on so most of the factors are delivered by soil next slide please <clears throat> so if, how can you find out whether the soil is healthy or not so if we see the root system if the soil is healthy then the root system system will grow longer and it will have more area of soil from where it can extract the nutrients water air and uh, this water so that means if you find out a root uh, plant and you pull out a plant and if you find out the root system is quite good that means your soil is healthy more or less 
if you find out your uh, this root system is narrow is short that means your soil is not that much healthy it also depends on the this genotype of the root of the plant but it is having some root length so maximum root length means your soil is very much healthy the the root system can penetrate long your soil texture structure physical chemical and physical condition is quite good and the soil is getting more and more area from where it can have its air water and food <clears throat> next please so soil i will say i will come i will give some little basic information it is i think everyone in this forum who are present everyone knows it but still i will like to touch on this ki soil is a three phase uh, soil system it is having solid part liquid part and gaseous part in the solid part you will find the minerals the uh, mineral matters which have been derived from weathering and breakdown of parent rocks as influenced by the various process of soil formation the organic components resulting from the accumulation and decomposition of plant animal residues <clears throat> and if you find some arable soils and there we will be finding most of the soils contain but in arable soils that contains innumerable amount of living organisms both macro and micro of plant and animal life the most active and numerous among them being the microorganisms okay so in the solid part you will find minerals organics and micro in the liquid part there is water with small amounts of dissolved solids in it and in the gaseous part the air 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 part that is the air rich in carbon dioxide state of matter so because rich in carbon dioxide why i am saying it because the microbes they respire and they are whatever carbon dioxide are there that is being get into those pores so if you go through this uh, the small diagram i have put that is in soil it is in an ideal soil is an healthy soil you will find 50% solid material 25% water and 25% air in the solid material 45% will be the mineral material and 5% will be the organic material these phases are not physically separable but are intermixed in such a way that with the solid particles are interspersed with pore spaces and capillaries which are filled with air and water it is not stacked like that ki this is solid this is water this is air it is all intermixed and in the capillaries and the pores you will find air and water <clears throat> and the space occupied by air and water together consists about 50% of the soil volume and the to be a more or less an inverse relationship so if there is more rain more um, flooded condition then all the pores become filled with water and air become less and when it is well drained when uh, there is drought situation when there is evaporation loss where there is a heavy transpiration then this air pore portion is more so <clears throat> you have to maintain a healthy soil in such a way that 50% contains solid 25% contains water and 25 contents here yeah. so this management things we have to do by making the soil healthy to make it the soil healthy next slide please so <clears throat> soil properties this we are saying we, there are mainly three physical properties chemical properties and biological properties okay <clears throat> this physical the physical and chemical properties are shaped by the biological activity if the bio microorganisms are more then they will uh, uh, organic matter is enough then maximum uh, this biological activity will be more and they will convert more uh, nutrients from organic to inorganic form the structure and texture will be uh, different with the uh, presence of organics and their biological activity that governs the physical and chemical properties and on the other side this biological activity is enhanced or limited by chemical and physical conditions so if your physical conditions are not good then uh, the biological activity will not be more if your chemical conditions are not good not enough nutrient is there then uh, 
uh, not enough uh, nitrogen is there, then your microbial conditions will not good. If uh, your physical condition means not enough air, not enough water, then the microbes will not be that much active. So this physical, chemical and biological properties <clears throat> are uh, uh, related and they are, they are supporting each other. And this I will say, the healthy soil is biologically active and containing a wide diversity of microorganisms. A soil will be only healthy because this microbes only govern the physical chemical properties of the soil. And at the same time, these physical and chemical properties are, are there. They also uh, this, uh, enhance the activity of the, enhance or limit the activity of biological uh, this microbes and thus the biological property of the soil. Next, please. <clears throat> so I will go a little fast here. I will not stress on this physical properties. These are everything is known. That is mainly texture, structure, bulk density, porosity, water retentivity, and water movement. Because for any living being, air and water is very important. If air is, air is not enough air and water, then a micro cannot uh, live comfortably and cannot be active. So we have to provide enough air and water to them. And uh, for that, uh, we need to have a very good physical properties of the soil, the texture, the structure, so that the pores, we have uh, at least 50% pores in the soil. So and uh, among these 50% pores, we have to have 25% water and 25% uh, uh, air. Next slide, please. <clears throat> and the, another factor that very much important is that organic matter. See, the various uh, soil, uh, the, we are having organic matter, uh, soils contain various amounts of organic matter formed from the decomposition of plant and animal residues. But uh, if you find there's uh, soils with high organic matter and soils with low organic matter, then uh, if you pour down equal amount of water, then the amount of water uh, get uh, more infiltrated in the soil where there is no low organic matter. Then this water is not available to the plants as well as to the microbes. So if you have a little high organic matter in the soil, then the water holding capacity of this water, organic matter is quite high and it can have more and more water for the plants as well as for the uh, microorganisms. So this is also an important part to keep the soil alive. <clears throat> Next, please. So this is the physical part where we are having 50% soil, solid, 25% water and air. But at the same time, we need to know about our soil condition. How much we have to maintain this porosity, this 50% porosity uh, very much in our soil. And for that, it will be helped by knowing our bulk density, our particle density, and the porosity of the soil. So this is very basic thing in the and uh, our agriculture system and uh, so basic uh, and we should practice this i i will rather say ki you just take some uh, soil and try to find out what is the bulk density what is the particle density and if you find the bulk density and particles and density definitely you can calculate the porosity of the soil and you try to find out whether it is more than 50 percent or less than 50 percent yes if it is more than 50 percent try to uh, put some heavy thing solid part in it like clays like organic matter and if it is more than this then you have to try to improve that structure and structure of the soil that means you have to create more and more that also have been helped by organic matter and uh, it will uh, create more if it is more uh, bulky then you have to put some sand in it if it is more heavy so that it will be it will come in medium part and it will have 50% uh, porosity with 25% water and air. So to uh, go a little fast, I will say, what is the bulk density? You will say this, the solid part, the mass of the solid by the mass of the total volume of the, this one, total volume of the soil. That means Vt, M is by Vt. That is the bulk density. And when we talk about particle density, then it is, mass of the solid divided by volume of the solid. 
So this is the bulk density and this is the uh, your uh, particle density. And from there, you find out the porosity, porosity, and uh, this uh, porosity will be VA by VT. That means total, what is the total pore volume by total volume? So you have to find out, please maintain, keep this structure always in your mind so that you will never be confused and you will have all the relationship, physical relationships uh, shapes and also you will have you can very well maintain the water and the air so i will uh, always suggest you to always keep this diagram in mind and these small formulas like what is the mass weightness so this is the what is the mass of water divided by mass of solid if it had been interactive i could have interacted with you but i feel this uh, small small basic thing should be always in mind and this will help you in maintaining in managing soil and keeping the soil alive <clears throat> so i will not take much time in this slide i request all of you to always keep this in mind please next please so like this with the soils are uh, being having uh, this particles, sand, clay, and uh, your uh, silt. These are the basic uh, particles, and these are the different sizes. I think all of you know. But with the composition, with their proportions in the soil, it makes different type of soils, like heavy soils, medium soils, and light soils. So by this, when you have heavy soils, so your porosity will be more, uh, more micro pores will be there. So air and water may not be that much available to the plant. So in that case, you can make it put some sand in it, and it will be little loose. There is light soils are there. You have to put some clay or organic matter, so that will help in maintaining managing your soil. Next slide, please. <clears throat> So these are the different ranges in different types of soil. So that I have mentioned and you, you also very well know. So we are having mainly light soil, medium soil and heavy soil. So medium soils are mostly the most uh, fertile soil and they are having a very good uh, this uh, proportion of solid, liquid and air in it. And this uh, soils, we always try to make soils medium. So neither light soil is good for plant and not the heavy soils are good for plant. So you cannot say these healthy soils, but definitely the medium soils are healthy. Next, please. <clears throat> so we had an opportunity in one of my NAIP project, we have worked in IGP, Indian Gangetic Plants and this black soil region. And you know, this black soil region consists of heavy soils. Whereas the, uh, this one in IGP are fertile soils. So here we find a distinct differences in the composition of their um, sand, silt and clay. So you can very well find in black soil, we are having around 56% of uh, clay, whereas in fertile soil, that is 36%. So we can say, okay, this soil is medium. So it was more healthy, IGP soils. Whereas the black soil region, they are not that much healthy. Next, please. <clears throat> so one thing I will like to say here, what is the, the water available in the soil? So that is very much uh, required. How to find out the plant available water in soil? So water is held in, uh, in the, on the solid particle by adhesion and in the pores by metric forces. The force of addition and co cohesion between water molecules themselves and with the water and solid particles at maximum near the particle size and become negligible when it goes to 0. Point, more than 0. 0.06 millimeter. So when it is more attached, the water is held. When it is away from the particle, then it is little loose. So hence water molecules farther than a uh, 0.06 millimeter from the particle surface move freely without any tension through the soil. So that is the gravitational water and it is not useful for the plant. So in the, the curve, you can very well see that gravitational part, that water which is loosely held and it is gravity with the, through, uh, with the gravitational force, it drops down, it goes infiltrate. So this water is not available. But the water which is closer to the particles, solid particles, they are available, they are attached and they, when the tension comes from the plant, it goes to the plant. So that is one part. And the other part, another worm is 
this very hydros hygroscopic water which is there in the capillaries and that is also unless tightly in cases uh, this heavily in the micro pores and they are not able to come out so this hygroscopic water which is uh, available is not available to the plant but the water that is not that closely attached to the solid particle but not close uh, uh, closely uh, attached to, uh, to the loosely attached to the solid particle are available to the plant so what i am trying to say is that the gravity with the gravitational water which are loosely attached which is more than 0.06 mm away from the solid particles they are very loosely attached loosely held with the soil with the soil particles and not available to the plants because it flows down due to gravitational force and the water which are in the capillary micro pores my pores are of two types macro pores and micro pores that are in the microscope the pores they are hygroscopic water they are not able to come out with the tension exerts by the plant and that is also not available to the plant so in between this which are not that much closely in the which are not that much in the capillary uh, micro uh, pores and which are held with, uh, by the side of the soil are available to the plant so that is what which are available which are not available that i am saying and it is mainly measured through field capacity and permanent filling point wilting point as you know so if i this field capacity as 1/3 bar and permanent wilting wilting point as 15 bar so within this range the water which is held is available to the plant next please <clears throat> so these are the different uh, soils light heavy medium sandy the soils and what are the field capacity and permanent wilting point available moisture so that is uh, being given in this table so with the uh, more uh, clay and more organic matter the available moisture is quite high to the plants the sandy soils you can find they are having less amount of water because most of the water penetrates down as i have shown you in the figure where of organic matter is uh, the soil with low organic matter so they are penetrating down whereas the soils with high organic matter or this colloidal particle clay the soil, the water is being held in the soil next please so this is the relationship that we found in the bsr this black soil region soil and igp that igp soils uh, they are having less amount of water whereas this bsr they are having more amount of water as they contain good amount of clay next please so this is the also the water is there but the movement that is the saturated hydraulic conductivity of the water if you find that is also good that is zero to there has been this thematic map you can see in various region what are the uh, this uh, k k is saturated hydraulic conductivity and it is quite good it varies from uh, zero to uh, seven next please whereas uh, in this um, black soil region this saturated hydraulic conductivity is quite low because clay is there clay is there and it's because of clay the micro pores are there and because of this the water cannot move properly so the thing is that though it contain a good amount of water but this water is not able to move and it is not easily going to the plant so in that case the igp soils are better because they have mini medium amount of water and at the same time the saturated hydraulic conductivity is good because their structure is good their texture is good the pores are well connected and that's why the uh, water can move freely to the plant next please so now we'll come to chemical properties that is the you know these are the uh, essential nutrients that is um, required for the plants to grow well and this is um, required because uh, the uh, this is only happen this nutrients can be readily available in the plants if the biological activity is good because the all the nutrients are stored in the soil in organic form and that is being converted to the inorganic form by this microorganisms so if the microorganisms are comfortable they are happily active then definitely the nutrients are available in the soil and there the soil will be rich in nutrients and that will be available to the plants next please 
So if you see, so we we need a very we we are now producing around two hundred eighty four uh, million tons of uh, water, a million tons of food. Sorry, our food production is two hundred eighty four million tons, and uh, during two thousand seventy eight, and for that we are using a huge amount of nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium, and that amount is being increasing day by day. so the productivity from unit fertilizer consumed has been decreased so earlier the productivity is quite high uh, with by using say 1 kg of nutrient and now it is becoming decreasing day by day and the maximum uh, this uh, proportion of chemical fertilizer used for are going to the waste and polluting the environment environment especially the nitrogen so we will find nitrate pollution so uh, these only nutrients are not used judiciously and they are being uh, they are polluting our environment next please so there are some laws i will go very fast see if the plants require most of the nutrients see if if uh, uh, soil contains a nutrient that is enough for 5 ton uh, uh, wheat nitrogen for 5 ton wheat dry matter per hectare so enough f for 8 ton and enough k for 10 ton per hectare see nitrogen is there for 5 ton per hectare phosphorus is there for 8 ton per hectare and k is there for 10 ton per hectare then 5 ton per hectare wheat will be produced and now a nitrogen will be the limiting nutrient i i feel i am very much clear it is a very basic law so whatever nutrient we are having in the soil if that nutrient uh, the the minimum amount uh, can be produced from any of the nutrient that that amount will be produced so if you have you want to produce 10 ton wheat then you have to keep nitrogen in the soil for 10 ton wheat uh, phosphorus in the soil for 10 ton and k is always uh, k is already there so you have to manage nitrogen and phosphorus so in this way we have to know you have to know your soil how how much nitrogen is there how much phosphorus is there how much potassium is there so that is a, we now it is soil health card it has become very popular and we definitely know the initial status of the soil before going for any uh, this recommendation of fertilizers so that we can have a targeted yield next please another thing is there it is not that if you go on giving nutrients 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 it will yield more 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 no it is not like that it is having some optimum requirement optimum uh, this uh, um, production and then after that it will it will generate toxicity so that is also harmful to the plant so we have to know which crop required how many how much nutrient so it is always better for crop test uh, soil test crop response method to be adopted and uh, whatever uh, this uh, recommendation has given that to be adopted and you should know the soil how much uh, this um, nutrient is there in your soil and uh, you have to supplement those nutrients which are minimum in soil and uh, at the same time you have to also fix your target yield and that also depends on different varieties it also depends where even in the simple crop a single crop with the varieties also it depends so accordingly you have to choose your variety your crop on the basis of the soil nutrient status next please so these are the symptoms through symptoms also you can find out what are the uh, deficiency in the soil and accordingly you can supplement next please Ha uh, for that soil testing is very much important so you collect your soil and you do your soil testing part and definitely know the what is the nutrient status in the soil next then uh, this for chemical part it's always remembered that best the soil grow best and it is always having maximum nutrients at soil ph values between 6 and 7 so you test your ph you find out Oh, it is a acidic soil. That means you have to put some 
you have to bring the soil if it is 5.5 there are crops like soybean they grow well in acid soils besides if you want to grow some other crops so you have to pull up pull out your ph so you you try to make it through lime through there are so many residues are there so you put that one and you try to pull pull up the ph between 6 and 7 if it is more then you try to you have to leach out the nutrients that is more that is what they are doing in saline alkali soil so when it is less you have to add some positive, basic uh, things when it is more you have to leach out the basic things so in the in the this acid uh, where the acid soils are there where there you will get heavy rainfall this is slopes are more where there is more red leaching due to rain the nutrients are leached the basic because calcium uh, it's very much highly leachable potassium so the basic parts they leached out so soil becomes acidic so that's why you have to put again back the lime part the basic part so you put some base to make the soil neutral in acid soils and in basic soils in alkaline soils you try to uh, drain out the basics next please so these are some of the uh, all daily use materials and their ph see when we go to in your uh, there is not much uh, pan that is uh, we used to take the during some invitation heavy eating so after that we used to take pan we, that gives us pleasure because we eat so much food it creates acidity and it, when we take pan it is having ph 8.5 so it is it is it gets relief even any time you take pan and pan you see when you make pan you put some lime in it right so that also helps in neutralizing that acidity even that whenever acidity is there you are taking magnesium this milk of magnesia gelucil these are all basic things so that neutralizes your acidity so in this way the next please Now, see, this is in Manipur where I was working in acid soils to rejuvenate citrus orchard. This is all citrus trees, you know. So that is to rejuvenate citrus orchard. We are putting lime in furrows. So lime, which is having pH eight point five, and it has definitely helped in the, this rejuvenating this crop. Next, please. now we are coming to our theme today that is the soil a biological laboratory this is very very important we have to keep our soil alive and uh, <clears throat> you will find that wherever there is less biological activity the the nutrients are less the physical condition of the roots are not growing well so definitely it is the key part of the soil to keep it healthy so they mostly what they are doing what is their what are their activities they are disintegrating largely disintegrating the physical disintegration of plant residues by insects and earthworms then complete decomposition of residues by smaller microorganisms such as bacteria fungi and actinomycetes and they release several nutrient elements including nitrogen phosphorus and sulfur from organic combination so all our nutrients are stored in organic form and they are being converted to inorganic form with this microbes they only help us next please so we have to conserve and sustain our utilize this agriculturally useful microorganisms it is very 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 important because uh, so many microorganisms are now they are not conserved they are just lost and they they, they give the, the different diversity in the soil and we have to conserve this microorganisms uh, which are agriculturally useful they enhance nutrient supply to crops as you know symbiotic and non symbiotic biological nitrogen fixation then solubilization of phosphorus in soil then uh, plant growth uh, promoting regulators they stim stimulate plant growth biological control of crop pests these microbial biopesticides and so many many more they improve the soil structure degradation of soil pollutants 
or bioremediation. So microbes are used to degrade uh, soil pollutants, degrade the consortia are being made to degrade uh, pollutants and also for bioremediation because they absorb uh, chemicals and uh, the organics and they help in degrading, even making compost also. So they are being used. So these are very useful microorganisms. Next, please. So these are some of them. I have given some these names like symbiotic. We all know rhizobial, actinorhizal, burkhardial, cyanobacterial. That is working with uh, Jola. Then non-symbiotic also. You know this azotobacter, azospirillium, acetobacter, hardibospirillium. Azomas. These are the different uh, organisms that can freely fix nitrogen from here. And we have to use it in a larger way. And we have to educate our farmers to use it in a larger way. And then obviously solubilization of phosphorus in soil because in acid soils we have found that these are phosphorus are limited. So even in alkali soils also the phosphorus are limited. So we can use some of the phosphate solubilizers that help in uh, make uh, may the soil rich in phosphorus or it will enhance the phosphorus status in the soil. For that, these uh, microorganisms are there. They help in uh, enhancing the phosphorus in the soil. Next, please. Uh, these are the BGPR organisms that is fluorescent uh, pseudomonads and bacilli. These are the majority. And others are there like Acetobacter, Agrobacterium. These are the different names, Acetobacter, Agrospirillium. And you can find out. And then biocontrol agents. There are so many organisms like Thuringiensis. They help as, they work as insecticides. They as worked as bactericides. They work as fungicides, insecticides. So these microbes can be uh, used for um, our target uh, insects so that um, we can uh, control them biologically because uh, whatever bio, uh, these pesticides we are using, they are very much harmful to our microorganisms. They not only kill the worms, they also kill our microorganisms. And they, in that way, we are making the soil more deteriorated. In that way, if you can grow for more micro biological organisms, microorganisms, and we, we can utilize their different properties definitely it will help us to keep our soil alive and fertile as well. Next, please. Then uh, useful for animal production also, though we are talking about soil, but I th thought is it agriculture? So I will give some insight for this also. And uh, for animal production also, we use microbes for improvement of low grade roughage. And we also use microbes for biological control of gastrointestinal nematodes and uh, as probiotics or direct fed microbes are also there. So these are microbes which are used for animal production as well as we are also having microbes which are useful in fisheries like they use in mineralization and breakage of proteins, oxidation of ammonia, oxidation of nitrite, reduction of organic matter, breakage of plant material, and breakage of hydrocarbon, bioremediation abilities, and so on. So uh, actually, we don't know much about these microbes. You know, We are not culturing much about these microorganisms. But time has come. We have to think on it. We have to be more organic. We have to be more dependent on our whatever available natural uh, occurring microorganisms are there. We need to culture them. We need to conserve them. And we need to utilize them for the work they, uh, they, are, they can perform. So in that way, we need to make our uh, make our uh, self more wiser, more, uh, more uh, knowledgeable. And at the same time, we have to make our uh, this farmers, our end users, our stakeholders, they are also uh, know if they can also culture more in this field, definitely we can keep our soil alive. Because this uh, one thing is that it is not that instant, whatever this we are working with pesticides, we whatever we are working uh, with fertilizers, they are giving some instant uh, reaction. 
but it may take some little time because this is a biological factor this is an environmental factor so it will uh, definitely take a little more time but it is very much useful and beneficial to the soil next please so major strategies of conservation, as I am saying, it is ex situ conservation we need to do. Like uh, we that whatever some agencies are there, some cultural collection centers are there. Even whatever uh, microorganisms we are isolating, we are identifying, we are also sending the culture to them. So they are also protecting this culture, this uh, culture collection centers are there. So many have come up. We are sent to Chandigarh in CBI. And then in situ conservation, that is also very much required. So we need to conserve some areas and that should not be disturbed. So there with some restrictions to be there, like uh, this forest, some restricted forest areas are there. We have to conserve some area like that where we can maintain the natural, the ecological part of the microbial diversity so that it, 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 uh, it will help us in, near, in future and also we, it will help us in conserving the microbes. Then we have to reduce reduction in synthetic inputs as I was saying with this pesticides, biofertilizers, then other uh, this uh, promoting um, regulators, if not uh, organic synthetic, we have to restrict them. And also we have to rehabilitate it because those we have, where we have to find out those which are very much being destroyed, very much being destructed. So definitely we have to put some organics over there. We have to put some inoculation that uh, inoculating these microorganisms. And we have to try, we try to revive this, this part of the soil. Next please. So these are different uh, assessment variations so where we can assess at the this genetic level, this population level and the species level. So in the individual genetic species, that is, um, let's say for rhizobium. So we are having different species working in for different crops, different plants, different, some are working for moon, some are working for uh, lentil, some are working for uh, different strains. So that part we need to know even with the assess it in that way, even in the within the population, if how much bacteria is there, how much actinomycetes is there, how much fungi is there, that is there. Even within species, say whatever we have also worked on groundnut, this rhizobium species, we have taken different strains say nc 92 was one of the strain that has worked very nice and another strain tal 1008 and it is not work performing well so we have to assess this and make to make the inventory which is performing and that also depends on different types of soils if the soils produce it may act in a different way so in that way we have to just develop the inventory and assess the different species as well so that we can have a very good information storage of information then uh, definitely the size of population for rarity and abundance where there is less amount of uh, this microbes are there definitely we have to act over there and when there this abundant okay we can uh, find we can uh, conserve from there we can uh, uh, check out from there so this part also we need to know we need to assess and the definitely the species part that identity, new taxa, geographical distribution and possible use. See where we have to identify different species and then whether it is belonging to new tax taxonomic class, then that has to be restored. In which area it is being uh, found that has to be uh, this uh, data, that better database to be prepared. And what are the possible uses that also we have to be, we have to find out, we have to, uh, we have to, what I will say, research, we have to do research on this key, what are the possible activities this species can do. So in this way, we can uh, develop an inventory of the microbes and immediately we can make utilize of this. Inventory. Next, please. <clears throat> so these are the inventories like it has been uh, prepared and it is for uh, nitrogen uh, fixers. And here you so you can find out that uh, if it is you want to know identify a species or a strain, then you have to go for 16S or RNA sequencing. Then if you want to know the now what is the nitrogen fixing pot potential, then you have to go for nitrogenase activity. And if uh, there you have to work some 
isopropyl nitrogen. If you want to know the competitiveness, ki how, whether, how competitively it is working, then you have to go for the serology test, the molecular marker tests. Like this, if you want to work on stress tolerance in pH, in different pH, in salt, in temperature, so you have to keep an optimum range and then you have to go for physiological tests. What is the crop production? What is the crop yield? What is the yield attributes? Then you can find out, okay, this is the optimum pH and here we can, uh, this microbe can work better and it can fix more and more nitrogen. So like this compatibility also we can put to consortia mode. And there also you can find which is the economic media that is also very much important, culturability. Yes, whether it is a liquid media, which will be economic, whether it is a carrier-based media that is economic, it is economic. So you, you have to find out this uh, possibilities and then physiological tests are the tools from where you can recommend. It, recommend. So in this way, you inventories can be made, it is prepared. Next, please. <clears throat> so we got an opportunity in the NAIP as I have showed some few slides earlier in the uh, this one uh, for physical properties. There we, we have also tried to find out the diversity in the soil in different uh, subhumid moist, subhumid dry, humid, semi-arid area. So in the IGP soils, we have found that bacteria is more than actinomycetes and then for fungi. And it also varied from different, uh, uh, this uh, subhumid moist, we are having more amount of this microorganisms. Where in the base and this uh, distribution, what we found is the in the high management, high management means where we have put some nutrients, where we have put some water. So that is called higher management, but, uh, I think it is only the nutrients what we have given and but we don't find any such uh, difference in the same bioclimate so well, yes to some extent you can say this bioclimate this uh, water this uh, air that is more uh, important to the this microorganisms than this management part but definitely this management is also useful i will show you in the different in the uh, next slides. Next, please. So in the same way, we have tried in black soil region also. And there also we find the maximum activities in the uh, surface here. Definitely there, the water and here are more. So definitely their microorganisms also grow more there and they are active there. And at the same time in the bioclimates, it is also the same that subhumid moist is more than the subhumid dry and then semi-arid dry and arid. Next, please. Next, please. Yes, and then uh, we have tried in irrigated and rain-fed area, and we have found that uh, irrigated ecosystem is having more, high management system is more than the low management and agro ecosystem. See, in IGP, where the mid soils are medium, there we don't find much difference in management. But here in black soil region, we have found significant difference in management because the soil is heavy. So these heavy soils or the light soils, they need management. And then in this management strategy, we can improve the soil health. Next, please. So in the cropping system also definitely it, it influence the microbial diversity of the soil. And that mm. is, uh, we can find that legume has a maximum diversity followed by cereal, then sugarcane, and then cotton. Yes, these are all mostly published data. I have given some list also, and you can find out in detail if you go through this data. Next, please. So what are the, what, uh, microbial population, uh, what are the factors that is affecting the microbial population? And this is the output of our, this output of our this uh, research project only, that we have found that microorganisms are positively influenced by clay, fine clay, water content, electrical conductivity, organic carbon cation exchange capacity and base saturation. Whereas it is negatively influenced by bulk density, pH, calcium carbonate and exchangeable magnesium percentage. So this is a very good finding from our uh, this research. And we are uh, uh, really happy that this type of work has been done for the first time in India. Uh, 
So next, and this uh, project was led by NBSS LUP uh, Nagpur. So now we have found some microbial diversity, then some uh, how to make, what are the useful microorganisms and uh, this uh, practices. Now we will go for some practices that ensures good soil biological health. That is first, I will say adequate nutrient supply, fertilizers and organics, integrated nutrient management, leguminous crop rotations, inoculation of legumes with rhizobium, green manuring, organic farming, minimum tillage. Now, uh, I had some experience in working in Manipur, that is in the ICR Northeastern Region uh, Center, where I got an opportunity to work on acid soil. So I'll be sharing with you some of my experiences. I will be showing some of the photographs. And here, there I have come, I covered most of the things that I'm saying here. That is, what are the practices should be there to ensure a good biological health? Next, please. Uh, these are some of the uh, articles, published articles, uh, where um, based on which I will be talking next, I will be showing some photographs there. If you want to go through the detail, you can go through these publications and you will find the detail in it. Next, please. So, if you find an area which is flooded, which is, uh, which is uh, uh, waterlogged, then uh, in, a, in the down in the downside, then what we will do? We will we will be knowing that when it is flooded, we will be not getting any aerobic bacteria will not work. So anaerobic bacteria has to be there. So we and the crop has to be some crop water loving crop. So you will definitely grow for paddy, and the bacteria will be using is agospirillium, which is which is an anaerobic bacteria. So likewise, you have to go to the inventory, to the database, and you have to find out which is the suitable microorganisms and which crop to be grown. So first you know about your soil, and then you find out what is the pH, what is the water condition, what is the uh, slope, and then accordingly you plan your uh, this uh, crop and also the microorganism. Next, please. So here we are improving the soil conditions by applying lime through two methods. One is broadcasting. Next, please. Another one is furrow liming. So there we have got an opportunity to work with the state department to farmers and it is a direct interaction. So farmers are getting benefit out of it. So they are very much uh, interested in this work. So we are growing mainly groundnut, uh, the pulses and uh, wild seeds with the leguminous crops because uh, leguminous crops definitely improve the soil condition as they fix nitrogen and the nodules and uh, definitely by improving the soil pH because this pH are quite low. It is around uh, 4.5 to uh, say five. So it is quite acidic in nature and there we use lime. And lime is quite expensive where the recommendation is two ton per hectare. There we have reduced it to 500 kg per hectare so that it can be afforded, uh, farmers can afford it and they can use it for the improvement of the soil as well as the improved production. Next, please. So you can very well find out the farmer's practice and this is the furrow liming. What is the, you see the root growth, you see the lateral roots, you see the pods, you see the nodules. I will like to share a little two, three lines that uh, we, this, uh, this, when we put this demonstration there, so we were, uh, this is my first demonstration I put over there and for furrow liming in a farmer. So to, from, uh, it is a long far away village from our center. So when, while going, we have to keep our vehicle, say 500 meter away, and then we have to walk to the uh, field. So while walking, I was very much excited. I could not wait. So I was just trying to find out the effect of my treatment on the plant. And I'm asking uh, uh, the farmer, Ki, what do you think? What do you feel? How the crop is there? Then the farmer said, it looks more green. It is very, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's millennial. It is having more branches because it is a groundnut crop. So you can see only from the uh, upper side only. So I was happy and then I feel these are the things we are also taking measurements. 
say plant type, number of branches, and then for some photosynthetic activities. So these are the measurement they had taken. So they are saying that farmers are saying blindly, but we are taking it in a scientific way. So I was so too happy to know that this uh, the furrow lining is very much useful and effective there. Next, please. So you can see a close picture of the this one uh, effect of the line. Next, please. Uh, this is also you can find out see by seeing in the same plot. This is light green and this becoming deep green. So in this way, you can find out the soil is healthy or not. It is living soil. Living soil. It is much more living than the this our left hand side. Okay, please next. So this is the farmers uh, that farmers field and we, this it for farm performance and uh, we have found we have tried on groundnut and so I've been and in both way it has done very well. Uh, it is furrow liming at the rate 500 kg per hectare. Next please. Not only in that time uh, with the same Kharif season, but also in the Rabi season, this activity grows on because microbes are become very now are very much comfortable because pH has gone to six and they are getting the structure, texture, all has become started um, in improving and they are getting enough water and enough air. So now they are active, very much active, and they are keeping the green. You can see in the rabi where the entire area is fallow, but you can see the greenery over there where we have used our lime. So that means we have able, we are able to keep the soil alive and healthy. Next, please. So this is the same moisture stress. You can make close view. You can find out this is the moisture stress. And here you can find out what is the improved the improvement in the physical soil structure. And that is, see, in the initially I have told you, if the physical structure is good, if you have enough air and water, that will help the soil to be more alive. And the microbes will be comfortable in converting the nutrients from the stored organic part to the inorganic part. Next, please. So this is the story. This is uh, the farmer has become so influenced that he used to come every year and he has become a leader over there in Faro Lime. So it is a very good part from my side. Next, please. Uh, this is the same thing. This has been tried in maize. You can see this control plot. Can you see this control written? This is, there is nothing, the same plot in the same slope the, uh, by applying a, lime and lime you can see the greenery the healthiness because we have just taken the pH from, from five to six and that has helped in maintaining the soil physical condition the new chemical condition as well as the microbial activity next please Hi. Then comes the integrated nutrient management. Definitely, we are talking about lime. Now, we will say if you put FIM, if you put NPK, you can see this too. In the same terrace, the work has been done. The left hand side with control, there is nothing. The inherent soil with these uh, properties. And in the uh, this left hand side, you can see where we have put integrated nutrient management. And there you can find the soil has become really healthy and it is the microbial activity has become more next please so here we are putting this is a soybean crop we have started putting fim plus biofertilizers inoculating rhizobium so you can find out the greenery so because native soil contains less amount of water and less amount of microbes so <clears throat> that's why we started inoculating with rhizobium and only FIM, which is suitable for organic farming. So you can find out this uh, difference in yield as well as that you can see the healthiness of the crop. Next, please. It is a close view of the same. So you can find out the difference. Next, please. So I will share a farmer story. I will just go within two minutes. I will complete it. So we have gone to a farmer's field over there and he is, what he is doing uh, that sees it come is a compost in kitchen garden. Cow dung he is using cow dung for last 30 years and pig manure for last three years. Because compost is a very, to prepare compost from residues, it is a very uh, laborious thing. And nowadays, no one is interested in farming. But this, I think, in, during this uh, lockdown period, some reverse migration has been uh, has occurred, and some people have gone back to their rural farming. 
so that is a very good point positive point but uh, this farmer i am sharing with you this cow dung is for there he is using 30 years no this chemicals he is using next please so this is the lady's finger he is growing and this is the growth of the crop in where he is using th this during th uh, this th long 30 years cow dung next please so his original soil is having ph 4.49 next please and where he is growing this it has come up to ph 6.5 so you can see with this this way you have to manage you have to find out the basic things what is the ph okay if it is less than ph then you need to pull out the ph to uh, from 6 to 7 if what is the uh, porosity it is less than 50% then you have to find out okay we have to make it to 50% so in this way we need to uh, manage our soil next please so this is the view of the kitchen garden next see what he's doing it's a very effortless thing that i'm showing he is having some peaks over there and this uh, this he has what he has made he has a channel from the peak tray to the field and here it is being deposited and it is being dried he's doing nothing after drying he is putting this uh, dry pig manure to the different uh, the crops so he's not putting that much effort and you find this is the improvement ah, yes you go to the next now ah, see what is the improvement in the soil see this ph has increased the nutrient status has increased and organic matter has increased total nitrogen has increased definitely he is getting a better production next please so what are the parent this uh, factors that degrade soil biological health imbalanced fertilizer application burning of straw, crop residues, excessive tillage, pesticides, heavy metals, use of poor quality water for irrigation. Next, please. So this, as, as, as I said, fertilizers, a nitrogen source, they create acidity. So definitely it hampers the microbial activity. Next, please. So we need to have a soil health card. I will like to share one thing. In 2007, six, I, in 2006, I got to um, Dr. Professor Swami Nathan, very eminent uh, personality in our agriculture field. He came to Imphal and uh, I got a chance to interact with him. And being knowing that I'm a soil scientist, he said, issue soil health card. Then I said, uh, uh, soil health card is not our job. We are in research. Well, no, 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 it is your job to issue soil health card. Then uh, that time he was proposing a Bharat Nirgra, seven point Bharat Nirman program and soil health card was one of them. So I talked to our gen, this director and our uh, joint directors and I pursued this, uh, uh, this uh, uh, program and I uh, finally I designed a soil health card. But you will please see, I have put soil physical properties, soil chemical properties, as well as soil biological properties. Now the soil health cards are there, but these soil biological properties are not there. So we need to include the soil biological properties. And for this, I think awareness is required, not only at grassroots level, but at the policy level also. So you are the future of our generation, all, science, all students, you will be growing. And I think you should take this point to include soil biological properties in the soil health card. And it so happened, I sent this after releasing this card in um, 7, November 2007, I sent a card to Professor Swaminathan and he appreciated my work. That's uh, one of my uh, finest achievement you can say to give bring appreciated by this honorable person next please and then burning of crop residues you know we are not only burning rhizotrophs but we are burning the surface of the soil which contains huge load of microorganisms and uh, that is a very much deteriorative activity uh, for our soil and that is dying that is making our soil die so we have to prevent this burning of crop residues Next, please. So organic farming, I will say, is one of the best option to conserve soil biodiversity and keep soil alive. Use of biofertilizers, biopesticides, recycling of crop residues to compost, no synthetic inputs, integrated farming system. Here I will stress on all the components like fishery, like uh, uh, this uh, animal science, duckery, 
uh, cropping system, not only cereals, it includes uh, vegetables, fruit crops, even legumes. Legumes should be must. I will I have put one, uh, this legumes has to be there in any of the cropping system that will keep our soil alive. And so I stress on integrated farming system in an in a organic way. There should not be anything from outside, everything from inside. And it also helps if you go for integrated farming system, it will help in maintaining your organic farming. Then conservation of water, because whatever water you are, uh, please go to the earliest, uh, whatever water you are using in your farm, you should not let that water move to the other farm. Because this water, whenever it is moving, it is moving with some dissolved salts in it. So definitely it will, that your fertility status will be lowering. So definitely you try to conserve this water in your field itself so that it will not, you not let this water go. And you definitely you work in closed system that I want to say nothing from inside, nothing from outside, only the green part that will, will be consumed that will go outside. Other than that, nothing will go from this, uh, this farming to the outside. Next, please. So I will come to the last slide. I have taken so much time, I feel, but still I have come to the last slide that uh, first I will say, please know your soil. As I said that uh, in, the, the, in my slides, at least you should know the nutrient property, the physical properties and the biological property of the soil and try to meet the deficiencies. What are the deficiencies of that? Choose the most suitable crop. With you know the soil status, you know the physical status, you know the biological status, you know the, the topography. So accordingly, you choose the most suitable crop that can be grown. And use legumes in the cropping system. Definitely, in your cropping system, one legume has to be there that kicks nitrogen, that, that improves the soil condition. Then manage residues properly. Try to make out compost out of feet. Try to uh, conserve the uh, soil moisture by using it. Don't you burn it. Don't um, this. If you are feeding the residues to the cow, fine. You feed the residues to the cow. But uh, definitely uh, don't uh, and use the compost. You feed the residues and in turn you use the compost. That's why it's traced on integrated farming system. So you use the residues and then definitely uh, you use the compost as well and uh, uh, plan well, uh, definitely there should be planning. We don't plan our agriculture, you know, that's why we don't grow. We don't know how much production is there last year. When we go for survey, we ask how much uh, production is there last year. Ek boda ho gaya, do boda ho gaya. They, they don't give an exact amount. So how many, what are, how many, what are the fertilizers you used? What is the quantity? Wow, how much water you have used? So nothing precisely we get. We always get some uh, assumed amount or it is not like this much, this point, this, 100.2, like that. It is not like that because we don't maintain a register. So we don't plan things. If this gate fails, plan A, if it is fine. If we get flood, then we go to plan B, this slide. So definitely, what are the microorganisms we are using? What are the microorganisms to be used? What to conserve, what not to conserve? So those things, definitely, we need some planning for our agriculture that will help us in growing. <clears throat> And always be positive because we, when we start something, farming is a very difficult because we work in an, uh, this unpredictable situation. So definitely we, there will be so many problems will come. So we have to be positive. So here I will share a little story of Japanese. They are very much fond of fish, you know, Japanese. So they have started, they fetch fish from seas and by the, the whatever fish is available by the shore, it got consumed. Then they started uh, taking a boat with a tank and they go to the middle of the uh, sea and fetch uh, uh, this fish. And then they used to sell them. Then the consumers say, no, 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 no. This is uh, sometimes it rotten, it is not well because it takes some time to uh, during this process. So no, no, this is not a fish we want. Then they start, okay, then they put some, uh, this one, water in the tank and then they are, initially they were started uh, bringing frozen fish. Then it was not uh, light, 
then uh, they started put they put uh, water in the tank and they started bringing live fish and they packed in the full tank and so that the, this fish are not able to move also because it is a business thing they need more profit but the uh, consumers when they sell them they say oh, it's fine it's okay but that thing is not there that taste we are not getting then uh, they said what they will do then they uh, put an idea they put a small shark in that tank so when the shark is there definitely it is consuming some uh, fish but at the same time the fish started running here and there and so they can have the uh, that uh, movement and now when they sell them they, then the consumer said yes yeah, this is the taste we want so definitely there will be problem but we have to find out the solution and ultimately i will say if we go through this process we can keep our soil alive then next slide i would definitely acknowledge dr sachidulal rai choudhury principal scientist who has worked with me in most of the research and also helped me in this making this presentation and uh, next please so thank you sir we have some questions from our participants sir you you are on mute sir you can invite questions kemala sir yeah okay sir uh, thank you ma'am for your exhaustive lecture and uh, um, uh, hope uh, the students and the, all the students from undergraduate students they learned they understand what is soil and uh, what are the things going on in soil and the importance of soil thank you ma'am and we have some questions from uh, the participants please go ahead yeah uh madam day by day uh, cn ratio is reducing in soil how we can improve cn ratio in soil and how much time take it will take 0.5% increase of cn content in soil i think uh, the participant is mean to say about the carbon yes the organic, organic carbon, carbon yes. yeah 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 so, so organic carbon definitely it is a now it is a very big problem now as i said uh, we need to restore organic carbon sequester organic carbon in soil so that we can improve our uh, the soil and for that you definitely residue incorporation is very much required that we are burning we definitely go for incorporation and at the same time we have to inoculate microorganisms because if the soil is not having native microorganisms we have to the, the microorganisms will not work on this uh, residues and the carbon nitrogen will not this ratio will not be uh, this one uh, enough one is to take our main uh, this our um, what is the standard ratio we are maintaining so for that i will say go for incorporation of crop residues organic matter and also at the same time inoculate microorganisms okay and what we need to measure soil health parameters like all macro and micronutrients on the farm the ah, reason yes that we have i have given that soil health card i think it will answer his question but at the same time if you are soil, soil this area wise we have some deficits you know some area is boron deficient some area is sulfur deficient so definitely these parts will have to be there to find a place in the soil health card in measurements like in acid soils i have put exchangeable aluminum because that is a very important factor governing the acid soils so what are the governing factors over there that has to find a place in the card and definitely the mostly the uh, now it is soil health card they are having all npk micronutrients iron copper zinc manganese and then sulfur boron it is there in the card that needs to be measured i think his question is more particular and form uh, in the house itself how we can know the soil fertility without going for uh, soil testing like that madam oh that that expertise i have not developed <laughs> but uh, but one thing is that you can uh, visualize that from your crop that i have shown if you put just put a seed in it you, you wait for some 2 uh, 3 months and you find out the crop 
the crop itself will show you that it is healthy or not that i have seen shown you in so many photographs that where the in the same land in the same area the crops are different because uh, the it is not being supplemented with nutrients and microorganisms okay and also the the next question is how to measure how much nutrient each crop would require one approach is measuring the yield want to know any scientific method of measurement ha uh, definitely we measure the nutrient uptake of soils a uh, nutrient uptake of crops right nitrogen uptake phosphorus uptake so there is a, a protocol is there process is there so every element can be measured using the protocol standard protocols and as well as the instruments whatever being whether it is a gel dial for nitrogen for uh, the spectrophotometer for phosphorus for flame photometer for potassium so different instruments are there and certain protocols are there and it is widely available thank you ma'am sir do you want to convey something sir or else uh, uh, i hope uh, madam has cover very exhaustively uh, touching the basic aspects which are very essential students and uh, bringing the concept also how do we maintain the biodiversity and uh, uh, students also should note down how the madam speaks very uh, strongly in, on each slide so there is a way we can make the learnings from the guest speaker how much to we how to we make presentation when you present a slide at least 2 to 3 minutes on a particular slide and touching the each point and explaining the all the slides also that is a, so students by this way of webinars students should understand and should know the uh, concept and also the learning method and teaching aids also so thank you very much for uh, madam for uh, eloquent presentation sir and i wanted to add uh, one more point sir uh, so our current third year students uh, our third year batch students are undergoing uh, soil science course uh, minus fertilizers and soil fertility management and i hope the entire uh, syllabus is covered in this lecture uh, uh, thank oh, you so good, much good. madam <laughs> yeah i hope the third year students might be attending the webinar and they found it very useful and also our second year students they are undergoing the Uh, soil survey resource inventory course for both the students it will be uh, very useful and also for all our scientists and uh, uh, participants it is a very exhaustive lecture and we know all about soil um, other than soil scientists many of the other faculty members also they came to know what is soil and what is soil biodiversity and how to maintain it thank you ma'am and before uh, concluding the session uh, uh, sir uh, for yes. the participants and uh, madam with the permission of principal uh, we conducted a greeting card designing competition for our students ma'am on the eve of uh, soil world day uh, celebrations so totally uh, among our students kumaraguru institute of agriculture students totally we received uh, 15 entries from representing third and second years and uh, out of 15 we uh, selected three uh, three prizes uh, just i'll uh, present the prize winners to the forum and madam yes is go ahead kamala the madam you are on the line yes sir. hi yes i am there okay I, uh, uh, we have conducted a greeting card competition madam you can see okay sir whether the slides are visible sir yes 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 visible yeah. kamala okay the third uh, sorry third place goes to uh, third place is uh, shared by three uh, two two students one is uh, ms vimala shri of second year and ms uh, shubha of third year and uh, the second place goes to kg maunika of third year and the first place goes to hari prasad of uh, third year Uh, mm -hmm. just i'll uh, display the first uh, place the card which uh, receives the first place this is the one it was designed by mr hari prasad prasad of third year and this Good is the one. card he designed but on the eve of uh, world soil day madam are you visualizing no ah, yes i'm visualizing and I uh, I, in my slide also i have put some part of it <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> it is it is a, a, a nee, um, just hmm. uh, this one the whatever the, the slogan he has made that we can see 
Hmm, good one. Yes, this is a very yeah. vital theme, and uh, I think yeah. uh, students should work on it. Yeah, appreciations to all the prize winners, and yes. also our Kumaraguru Institute of Agriculture uh, takes privilege and pride in celebrating World Soil Day celebrations. So I also congratulate all the winners and all the participants also who have participated. So it's a very good initiative and I think you should to carry on. Thank you, Madam. So the participants, uh, the certification gener uh, certificate generation link will be sent to you a little later. So if there are no more queries and further questions, uh, let me take this opportunity to thank our uh, guest speaker, Madam. So I wanted to mention a point here uh, that uh, uh, Madam, uh, I know Madam long back from 2012 onwards because Madam was my external examiner for my PhD thesis. I am very much grateful to you, Madam. And I uh, take this opportunity to thank you for your uh, uh, nice presentation and accepting our invitation to and deliver a lecture in World Soil Day celebrations. And also I thank our uh, beloved principal sir, uh, who was kind enough to conduct uh, the World Soil Day celebrations and uh, uh, sequencing of events. And also he chose the right person for uh, today's uh, celebration. And sir, I immediately I told sir to sir, we have to conduct Soil Day and sir uh, immediately said your name. And, and also sir told you may be knowing madam. So we are thankful, uh, I'm, I'm very much thankful to our principal sir also. And I thank our executive officer and our uh, management for uh, having uh, given consent to celebrate this World Soil Day celebrations. And also the technical team who worked with me, Mr. Madesh, uh, Shanmu Priya and uh, Netaji from KCT and all the, um, all the team who worked for it. And I also thank all the participants, students, and uh, my colleagues for their uh, presence and uh, active interaction in the session. Uh, thank you all. Thank you, madam. Thank you. Thank you so much. And I thank all of you and our Dr. Uh, Pandianji for inviting me. I hope I can do justice. And uh, I'm really thankful to thank you. Thank you, madam. Thank you, Hema. Thank you, thank sir. You. Thank you, madam. Thank you. I'm thank leaving you. now. Yes. Okay, okay. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you.